Got pretty much everything I need to start building the harness. I got loom, more loom, 20 gauge wire, 14 gauge wire, shielded wire for the uh, cam and crank signal, various connectors, storage connectors, more heat shrink, heat shrink here. I like these uninsulated splices, so I got a bunch of those. I picked up this pre-made coil harness for $10 on the Wiring Specialties Black Friday uh, sale. This is for an RB25, but should be able to make it work. I mean, it would have cost me way more than $10 to build it myself. Got the map sensor. There's some things missing, but this is enough to get started. So I think what I'll start doing first is terminating the coil harness into this big mess here. This is the K-Power jumper board. This replaces the stock ECU. So the stock harness will plug into this and then this goes out to this harness that goes to the Elite 2500. This is made for a K-Series Honda, but I should be able to make it work with the 2JZ. I'm probably gonna have to add some wires since I have two more injectors and two more um, ignition coils. So I'm not gonna film putting this in the car, but the ECU is in the glove box area. Just take the glove box out and you get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Here's the stock ECU, so I gotta pull this board out and then this board will go in place of that. And I gotta cut a hole in the back of this box so the Haltech can plug into it. That was not too fun to get out. There we go, cut a rough hole for the Haltech headers to come through. Factory harness plugs in there, Haltech plugs in there. There's the stock ECU. So now I'll put this back in the car. There we have it, the Haltech is wired into the, the car. The stock ECU lives pretty deep there in the dash and it was really not fun getting to it and swapping out for the uh, the jumper harness. The Haltech will be able to live up here in the dash. There's plenty of room for it. So I will tidy this all up and it'll look all factory in here. The most important thing when it comes to wiring is trying to stay organized. So I've created this spreadsheet. Over here on the left side is the pinout of the factory 54 pin connector. The right side here is the Haltech connector and I use the documentation from K-Power to go through and figure out what pin goes to, what 54 pin goes to what Haltech pin. And then as I'm terminating the harness, I'm marking them green, showing that they're complete. Some of this is gonna have to be moved around, like here, this is the VTEC solenoid, so is this as well. I think right now, both of these are actually gonna become ignition coils um, since the, the K-Power harness is only wired for four coils and we need six. So some of this stuff's gonna get reallocated I'm gonna post a link to this in the description because it might be helpful if anybody is doing a similar project. Um, I also just have the factory pin out of the 54 pin. So this is helpful for figuring out like where power is gonna come from. Down here, EFA, EFI main relay and the ignition relay. Um, yeah, I'll post this in the description. But like I said, this is probably the most important thing when it comes to doing wiring is staying organized and documenting what you're doing. I bought shielded wiring for my trigger setup. This has three wires inside of it actually. So I think I'm gonna run it down here along the engine and instead of through the, by the coils just to prevent any interference with it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a connector or not, but for now I'm just gonna get it following the factory wiring harness route into the car and down into the Haltech. Probably, um, probably put some, some black loom on that too so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. This is a sandwich plate where the oil filter goes. So this will allow me to run a feed over the turbo and an oil pressure sensor directly into it. I like to use the paste style thread sealant instead of tape. I find it a lot easier to work with. I just put a little bit of silicone spray on the O-ring on the back of this. The stock torque spec for the union bolt here is 29 foot pounds. So that's what I'm gonna use. I couldn't really find much info uh, as far as to what these union plates should be. Or these, uh, sorry, sandwich plates. All right, top it off, OEM Toyota filter. Lots of parts been rolling in for the build, so I had to break out the table here. It's a lot of money sitting on a cheap plastic table from Walmart. I have the pin out of the throttle body up on the computer. And I've cut some wires to length. This is super handy whenever you're making a wiring harness. So this is a label printer. 
and I actually have heat shrink that I can print on. So I'm gonna label the ends of all these since I'm gonna have some of the same color wire in there so I uh, don't get confused when I go to assemble this. Here's the process for crimping a wire. So take your wire, this little yellow thing is a seal so it makes the connector waterproof. Slide that on first, which is a little hard here because these wires are potentially a little oversized. All right, so seal is in place. Now I can crimp it, I'm sorry, strip it. There's it stripped. So now we're ready to put the pin on it. So here's my pin. This is a Molex crimp tool that I pretty much use for everything. There are definitely better tools out there, but I've had this one for a long time and it does the job. Better have good eyesight if you're doing this because these are quite small. I need to make sure that they're seated in the crimp tool correctly. So now I put my wire in up to the insulation and give it a crimp. And now I can move the seal up into place. All right, that looks good. Move to a different size crimp in here and crimp that down. All right, there is the finished product. So now this is ready to go into the connector. This is pin two signal ground. So this connector is actually labeled, has the pin numbers in the back. So this goes there. Clicked in, give it a little tug test, seems good. And then I will go ahead and put on my label I have made here so I know what is what on the other end of this. And that's one, one wire done. There's the completed pigtail. Everything's labeled. I double checked all of them, which is pretty important to do. So now this needs terminated into the 54 pin plug on the car. I'm also gonna probably loom this, but leave probably that much without loom. I think everything going into the 54 pin on the car is actually gonna just get tape. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and install the injectors into the intake manifold while it's out of the car. These are ID1300 XDSs, one area I did not cheap out on on this build. I have fuel injector clinic injectors in my Supra and I haven't been overly um, impressed by them. So I figured to spend a little bit more and get injector dynamics. So these will secure the rail to the intake manifold. On my Supra, I had to grind, grind down these to get them to fit properly. So I am curious to see how this works out. Seems like it's gonna fit better than the one on my Supra. So when I did this same exact manifold on my Supra, these spacers were too long and it allowed the injector to move up and down way too much, which if you don't check this, can easily lead to your car catching on fire. So yeah, with that pulled all the way down, the O-ring is still pretty far up in there. So I'm comfortable with that. I'm gonna just double check all of them though to make sure that you know the spacer could be shorter or longer than that one and vice versa. All right, I think we're good. Started on the wiring harness for the injectors. For sure when I did my Supra, I did this on the car, which was honestly foolish. Um, I'm going to be putting down here at the end a Deutsch connector so I'll be able to unplug that and pull off the manifold without having to plug every injector. So the power will have splices on this one run going to the Deutsch connector so they'll all be powered off one wire basically. And then obviously you need a wire for each injector which goes to the ECU which is actually the ground and is what makes it fire. So. Just kind of figuring out the lengths real quick here and then I'll mark the positive wire running through there and I'll mark it where I need to splice it for each injector and we'll be off to the races while making this. Making progress on the injector harness. Got number one loomed, about to do number two. 
This isn't necessarily hard. It's just very time consuming and tedious. So if you can buy an injector harness, I would recommend it. People are always asking me, Chris, why don't you buy a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? And really the, the actual answer is because I would have twice the amount of wires to deal with. So like on a V10 or a V12, you'd have 10 or 12 injectors. I don't want to deal with that. So why, why would I ever buy a Ferrari? This thing's better than a Ferrari if you ask me. I'm done terminating the actual injectors. So now I'm going to be putting this eight pin Deutsch plug here on the end. Not super happy how this turned out, but it'll, it'll work. And it's hidden underneath the manifold so you don't see it. Here's how it's looking. Got the injectors terminated into the Deutsch connector. Uh, I don't have the power terminated for the coils or the injectors. I need to actually plug this in the car and power it up because the documentation I got from K-Power was quite poor. I can't tell what's five volt, what's 12 volt, what's ground and what's signal ground. So I'm gonna have to figure that out myself. Um, I'm actually getting pretty close to, to being done here. Other thing that's gonna take some time is the transmission wiring, but I'm not gonna run that through the 54 pin here. Also, this looks ugly right now, but when I get all this done, I am going to tidy that up, probably deep in whatever I'm not using, and put some loom on it. These are my old Molex crimpers. I've had these for years and built the entire super harness with them. It's always annoyed me that the pivot point is there. It kind of makes it hard to do the, the insulation crimp on the back. They don't have that much leverage either. Did some research, and these seemed like a, a decent step up from the Molex. Hosen P707. These are made in Japan. It seems... Super high quality so far. I like that it's labeled on both sides. It's pretty helpful. So far, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. I think these were like 50 bucks, which is the same price as the Molex crimpers. So if you are looking for tools, suggest these. For the chassis grounds, I picked up this American Auto Wire instrument cluster grounding kit. All it is is basically a bus bar here. So I can terminate all my chassis grounds into this connector. This will plug in there, connect them all together. This will be mounted to the engine. You could just use a ring terminal and terminate everything into that, which is what I did on the Supra, but this is just a little cleaner and easier if I need to add anything in the future. I have these Earl's compression fittings to adapt the hard line to 6AN. That's either 5 16 or 8 millimeter, but it has a barb on it, so it doesn't allow this fitting to slide on like it should, so I'm gonna have to cut that off. Both adapters are on. Now, whenever you're doing fuel lines on a car, you should always ask yourself, do you think it's going to leak? And you should be absolutely certain that it's not going to leak. And unfortunately, I don't feel that way about those, but I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to hook up some scrap lines I have and drain the fuel out of this thing because it smells horrible. I think it's like five-year-old E85. I have some off-cut PTFE line left over from the Super Build. That I'm using to build these lines that go from the factory hard line up to my aftermarket fuel rail. So I just put that end on and just marked my cut on there. So I'll go ahead and cut that, get a fitting installed. There's a fuel line completed. It's not rubbing the manifold anywhere. I also got my fuel pressure sensor installed using a variety of adapters onto the fuel rail. That thing just barely fits in there, but I'm happy with it. This is the fuel pump control ECU. It puts out variable voltage to your fuel pump to control the speed of it. Most people delete these, but I want to keep it if I can. Um, tried lots of things to get this thing to work, and I'm just about to give up on it. So this is the pin out here. The FPC pin should be what is expecting a signal, which is wired into the Haltech, but nothing I do gets this thing to power on. All right, I got some helpful input from a Facebook group. Got a super quick response, along with a bunch of people telling me I'm an idiot for trying to keep this. But uh, at least one person out there gets it, why I'd want to uh, retain this feature. So I needed to set it to 100 hertz. And then my problem was I was using 100% duty cycle. Whenever you send this thing 100%, it, it doesn't run the pump. So the max duty cycle is 70%. And whenever you send 70%, that's actually its lowest state. 30% will run the pump at full tilt. So now it's working. I don't know if you can hear this. If I reboot the ECU, pump's running. So that is awesome. I'm glad to retain that since I'm going to be trying to return this fuel system. 
That's gonna be it for this video. I know it wasn't like totally comprehensive on the wiring, but hopefully you get the idea. I'll put some stuff in the description as well, links to the spreadsheet that I built and, and all that. It's just a couple odds and ends left on here. In the next video, we're gonna start this thing up. So uh, if you wanna see that, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.